everybody. Uh, I'm representing UNITE here. I'm a regional officer for UNITE. And I represent members both here and in the London institutions. And I think we're sending a very clear message to the national employers that we're not prepared to accept a measly 1% pay rise. We are here to protect the quality British education system. They can't pay you a pay rise this year. When can they ever pay you a pay rise? Our speaker here is Mordecai. He's a student at Cambridge University. Come forward. Firstly, I wanted to say on behalf of KUSU that uh, the students at this university will support the strikes and our lecturers and our support staff all the way. The unions are right to point out the hypocrisy of the University and, Coll and College of Employers Association. Capitalist system inevitably results in crisis, in inefficiency and the exponential growth of inequality that we see today. The only solution for this crisis can be socialism. That is the only solution. So our next speaker is Daniel Zeitner from the Labour Party. Families up and down this land are finding it harder and harder every month to make ends meet because bills are rising faster than wages. It's a fact. We've seen the longest fall in real living standards under any Prime Minister in recent times because people know there are economic challenges in this country. They're not daft but they're sick at the widening gulf between them and the people at the top. They're absolutely right to be furious about that. Because we stand today in this beautiful city, in one of the most prosperous and wealthy cities, in one of the richest countries in the world. And yet institutions like our universities and companies like Microsoft tell us they can't afford to pay their lowest paid staff a living wage. Our next speaker is Cameron Matthews from the Fire Brigades Union. Right, it is said that a mediocre teacher tells, a good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and a great teacher inspires. Well today, by taking a stand here, you've truly inspired many people. You inspire a generation of young people, of students, who will see their teachers make a stand for a moral code, and fight for what's right, fight for justice, and fight against bullies, and fight to champion fairness. We're here today because of the wide scale attacks on the teaching profession. There's been tax on, attacks on pay, attacks on pensions and attacks on terms and conditions. In a profession that's so vital and wide reaching, it's truly scandalous the lengths that such politicians as Michael Gove will go to to demonise the uh, teachers and their profession. And it's truly a wonder why any university student would want to enrol in a career after such demonisation of their teachers and lecturers. 
Our next speaker is John Devine from the NUT. And at present, um, our executives have decided that they're going to take up an offer from Mr. Gove to engage in talks. Now, what those talks may bring, we all suspect, is nothing. <laughs> and if, as, if that comes true, then the NUT and the NAS UWT will be assessing the situation at the beginning of January. And if we get no further in these talks, then we will be taking action next half term before February the 13th. You want to support us in that, then please contact us in the NUT. You can find us on the website, no problem. We're also concerned that behind all this talk of austerity is a determination by the government to restructure not just education, but the whole of the public sector and move it out of the public sector into the private sector. Our next speaker is Amy Gilligan, uh, who's speaking on behalf of the National Union of Students. I think what was really inspiring was having um, people from UCU and Unite and, and Unison on other picket lines as well, so all three unions joining together fighting for, to defend education and for decent pay. And I think that's what's really inspiring about today's strike, having the speakers from the FPU and the NUT, having their solidarity, because I think that joint action shows um, how powerful we can be. Higher education is the second most casualised um, sector after catering. And I think what we've seen over the last, over the summer, with all the statistics coming out about zero hour contracts, shows, shows just how deep it goes. Cambridge University in academic staff has almost 100 students on zero hour, uh, almost 100 workers on zero hour contracts. And there's, I think, Unison, I think, have estimated about 300 workers on it. And I think that's something, a fight that we um, can t we need to take on. Now, now here's, here's the slightly awkward part. I'm going to call on the last speaker, and the last speaker is me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Clint. laughs> <laughs> So, I'm speaking on behalf of Unison today. And I just, I want to say to everyone, first of all, I mean, this is brilliant. The speakers have been brilliant. It's been really inspiring. Um, I was going around to the picket lines all morning, you know, there's just a real strong mood here that we deserve better than this. Um, for the past four years, as people no doubt know, and just to recap, we've had, we had a flat rate pay rise that was a pay cut according to inflation. Then we had 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 in some order. And then we had 1%. And now they're offering us another 1%. This amounts to a real-term pay cut of 13%. That is the bottom line. Meanwhile, they're saying, well, we can't afford to give you anything better than that. Thanks for that, Yusia. Um, there's one billion pounds sitting around in your coffers. Has anyone mentioned that to you? Um, are you keeping your record books here? Because obviously it's not a question of there isn't enough money. They just put the fees up to nine grand, which was despicable. And they've, they've cut... Oh. Oh. So now the most disadvantaged can't get to university. The universities, on the other hand, should have tons of money based oh. on that. But it's, it's sort of two sides of the same coin, and it always works out worse for the people at the bottom, which is ourselves. Um, meanwhile, the University of Cambridge over here have an extra one billion surplus that they could dip into, but they don't want to because they have other things to fund, like more, more buildings. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's a question of priorities, guys. Um, we're here to say, we run this university. The university would not be open ever were it not for the hardworking members and staff. It's the support staff, the lecturers, the people who run this university every day. We come in, we clean it up. We fix it up, we're, we're there, we're giving out the books at the library, we're teaching the classes. This is what makes a university. We are the university. There would be no university without us. So I, I hope they get the message today that we're not going to just sit there and take this anymore. We deserve better than this. We give everything to our universities, and it's about time they treated us with the respect and the good, uh, the good conditions that we deserve, rather than giving us these cuts and 
um, pay freezes and, well, not pay freezes, you know, a pay, okay, you, you get what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but 13% no more. It's time we stand up and say, this is it. We're done. We're, we're, we're coming out here. We've called for sustained strike action. This won't be the last day unless they get around the table and give us the pay rise that we deserve, not just this 1% stuff. We're done with that. We're done with being disrespected. This is it. Okay, okay, so I'm going to take my speaker hat off and put my chair hat back on. Um, and we're going to do a bit of a chat to finish us off here, okay? So what are we doing? They say cut back, we say cut back. Okay, so they say cut back! We say fight back! 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 They say cut back! We say Fight back. They say cut back. 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 We say fight back